This part is an example of one of Machine Garden Cover Company's many thermoform bearing covers. The difference with this is not only is it blue, but it's formed out of a new material, a special metal detectable ABS plastic. We've gotten a lot of questions about this material, such as how can you make plastic metal detectable, and how detectable is it, and why is it blue? The reason for the blue is because there aren't many blue foods out there. A high visibility so it's a high, this is a This is what is preferred for high visibility for food. Now, they don't have a specific blue. There's kind of this range of what they're looking for, and this falls within that range. Is that anything that has some sort of light duty because the medium is like right, 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 right. right. well, as, as plastic? Yes. Okay, you know, it normally plastic cannot be detected with a metal detector. Right. Right? Okay, so they make microspheres, you know, tiny little balls of metal, okay? And they what they do then is they impregnate it in a carrier resin, and then what they do is then they pelletize it. This is the additive that they put into the batches of core material that's going to be injection molded or extruded out into the, into the sheet that we then form our part with. The additive that we give to our extruders to make the plastic metal detectable comes from a company called Eries. We also relied on them to get a lot of our testing numbers off this new material. We drove to their location in Pennsylvania to find out a little bit more about how this stuff works. Uh, so we have a piece of metal detectable ABS that we're going to cut into uh, pieces which are 6 millimeters by 6 millimeters with a thickness of 3.3 millimeters uh, to test on the metal detector. The, the, the question that we take a lot over the phone is, is it metal detectable, pass or fail? And the answer is, that depends upon what you're testing. If you're in a pharmaceutical environment looking for a pill, the size of the aperture you're looking for as that product goes through is very small. For larger food products, obviously the aperture is a little bigger. There is no pass-fail. It really depends on what you're looking for and then having it dialed into each application. Right. A lot of different food types have their own iron content. Mm -hmm. The classic case would be, say you're testing beef. Mm -hmm. Okay? Beef has iron in it. Absolutely. Okay, so that's going to throw out a bigger signal on the metal detector. A background, a background signal, right, a background this has signal. to be detected through. Right, and so you have to tune those machines in, and that's where the concept of these metal spheres, you know, what is the equivalent metal sphere? Mm -hmm. Here we have an array of test sticks with uh, either ferrous or non-ferrous or 300 series stainless steel spheres. The real goal behind this is to eliminate a choking hazard. FDA considers a physical contaminant with a dimension of seven millimeters or greater to be a potential choking hazard. Therefore, we've chosen something a little smaller than that seven inch, uh, seven millimeter dimension. You want enough concentrate in there so that a size of the plastic that's a choking hazard will not end up in the end product. In the end product, right. yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do is determine the signal size of this piece of plastic and what the equivalent metal sphere size is. So we'll run this plastic piece through on its own and measure the signal length. So on average, a three by three millimeter sample of this tests out the same as a one millimeter mild steer sphere. You had it up the testing portion of this. Correct. We How did that all come out with the strength testing? We sent them out for the Izod D256 impact test, right? and it was significantly weaker because the polymers were broken up more because of the additive in the way. Mm, about, that's typical. Exactly. About a third of the strength of the standard yellow material. This is similar to a trade show display when people ask how strong metal detectable is.
Mm-hmm. All right, that's good enough, I think, for a food service application. Right. Oh, not, yeah, you're not do, hitting with a forklift, that sort of thing. It's right. Like, you can't do that in the first place. Right, so. and you're not putting it on an aggregate conveyor where you're going to expect boulders to be hitting it. Either. Exactly. So, okay, okay, I'm happy with that. Good, good. I think we've created a very viable option compared to a metal guard, especially in the more complex shapes. Right. One of the nice things about this material is it forms really well. The, the ability for it to flow as a material is actually better than polycarbonate. My name is Dennis Doily. I am the plant manager of Machine Garden Cover Company. I have been working here for all roughly 15 or 16 years, and I know plastic. The blue material, in my opinion, is very similar to normal, regular ABS material. It forms the same. The cool times in the oven or out of the oven are the same. You can get sure. some nice crisp shapes of, of fairly high complexity. Okay. So the customers could see a significant cost savings then by going with this product over a metal product. Oh yeah. yeah, the cost of stainless welding, especially in food service, where you not only need it to be welded in stainless, but it then has to be ground and polished um, so that there's no cracks and crevices for the uh, any particular to adhere to, can be quite expensive. Okay. So by encapsulating the additive, there's not going to be any rusting. Which is a common occurrence in right. the guards. Right. No, we didn't see any any difference, and we've been testing it with a lot of the common um, uh, wash down uh, materials okay. used in food service. We did do some in house testing as well. Machine Guard and Cover Company has been working with the food industry for about 25 years, and we know how our standard ABS reacts to cleaners and those environments, and we couldn't really see a reason why the metal additive would cause the ABS plastic to act any differently, but we wanted to make absolutely sure. To establish a baseline for one of our tests, we took a sample and put it into a vise. Then we bent it until it broke. With that baseline established, we were able to take another sample, one that had been submerged in a cleaner for eight hours. I don't initially see any visual difference. I'm seeing no difference between the two. No, that yeah, there no, there's no significant difference. Yep, I'm pretty happy. So and they passed everything so far. Very good. That's like a standard ABS. The metal's not affecting those properties right, at all. Right. Right. Okay. I don't think this is because it's still ABS plastic. Right. I don't think the amount of additive is going to affect onset installation at all. It's still easy to drill a hole through the plastic. Oh yeah. You're yeah, not going to need any special tools. You're not going to need any other custom parts no, to modify this in the environment. No. There's not enough additive in there to cause any dulling, significant dulling, or anything of any bits or blades. They should still be able to use their standard on-site mm-hmm. tools for you know, hacksaws or whatnot to yeah. modify The trimming it. tools here just still trim it up just as well as the just, other stuff. Just as fine. Yep. So, those are the basics of Machine Guard and Cover Company's new metal detectable ABS. We hope this answers some of your questions, but if you have any more, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching.